the fact that the accident happened the way that it did, it just felt such a waste. You know, it was, he was just walking home from, from church. Uh, and then this person, for no reason at all, just hit him on, on the zebra crossing. And so it just seemed like a, a series of terrible decisions that led to my father dying. So my father, Ron, was, I'd say, a special, a special guy with a caring, a caring man. He had his nursing career. He took handicapped children to Lourdes on an annual basis when him and my mother were, were, were well. Um, he drove for social services, picking up um, foster children and taking them to school after he retired. He also helped children whose English was a second language learn to read, as well as being the treasurer of the rugby club and the treasurer in the Catholic Church. And then the last year of his life, he'd started going to the gym twice a week, um, which he loved. It was, it, yeah, it was, it sort of changed his life a bit, really. So he was, he was a really fit and well. 82 year old and obviously he had his children and then grandchildren and then great grandchildren which you know that was probably the highlight of his life and he loved spending time with all of them so I knew he was going to mass uh, Christmas Eve and then we just we were here my daughter and my uh, uh, fiance stayed so we just had a lovely Christmas Eve got up Christmas morning opened the presents of, as we did so around about 10 o'clock we were going up to my son's house to see my grandson and open his presents and just as we were leaving I had a message from one of my cousins saying uh, I hope Ron's all right so then she said he'd been in an accident and that the police were trying to get in touch with me so I said well give them my number and as we got to my son's house the phone rang and it was the police officer saying you, you know your father's been in an in a accident he's in a bad way and you need to get down to UHW the Heath Hospital as soon as possible. So myself, my daughter and her fiancé um, drove down to the Heath uh, where we were met by one of the consultants who found out quickly we were all in health again, told us straight that we were very unlikely to get him back. So by half past 11 Christmas morning when my wife and my son and my two nephews joined us, we sat down and just said, you know, he's gone really. And we're going to have to make a decision about turning off his life support. It was, it was as if, it was, it was like living in a, in a nightmare for the family because you just, it, it didn't sink in because of how it happened. And the, I suppose the effect of everybody else around you, everybody else was falling apart and we were just like stuck in the middle trying to, trying to get through it day by day. And it was, I think, only later when you really realise what you've lost. It's, it's just that's whereas Christmas normally would be something really good look, to look forward to now is that sense of dread because you know you know what's coming and who's not going to be there I think if anyone's making the decision to either drink and drive or take drugs or drive it, it, it's just it's a no-win situation for the simple sake of a decision that will take seconds you are possibly going to ruin your own life as well as somebody else's.